And we have another standardized test question. This is technically a GMAT problem, but it totally fits in uh, with the GRE flavor of problems as well. Um, I'm going to illustrate how to solve this problem in two different ways. One of them is purely algebraically, and the other way is my favorite way, which is to choose numbers. So, <clears throat> I'll start off with the algebraic way. And the formula that you need to know is distance equals rate times time. And I don't know why I have the green marker turned on, but I'm going to turn the marker black. Aaron jogs, and then he walks. And each time he walks the same distance as he jogs, so that means I can say whatever distance he travels, um, it's going to be equal to x miles per hour times the time he spends jogging, which I'll use j for that. And that same distance is going to be equal to y miles per hour times the time he spends walking. And I'll use w for that. And J plus W is T, because J is time jogging, W is time walking. So I'll give you a minute to catch up to everything that I wrote down because I didn't really give you a, any time to read the problem. Um, pay attention to the fact that the question they're asking is how many miles, which means ultimately we need to solve for D. Um, the initial algebraic obstacle that we're faced with is we have two different time segments that comprise the total time. We have the time spent jogging and the time spent walking. So, we have to figure out how to use that J plus W equals T. This is where, without some amount of algebraic inspiration, you're kind of lost. Uh, so the next step that I'm about to do may seem to have the quality of, you know, how on earth would I think of that? And so bear with me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to solve the first equation for J, and I'm going to solve the second equation for W, so d over x is j, and d over y is w. You could, of course, start with that setup because distance equals rate times time is the same as time equals distance over rate, or rate is distance over time. In any event, we can add these two equations, and we get d over x plus d over y equals j plus w, which is t. Now, if d over x plus d over y equals t, <clears throat> then what we can do is we can get a common denominator on the left hand side. We'll do that by multiplying by y over y and x over x. Then it becomes dy plus dx over xy equals t. I can factor the d out of the numerator. We have d 
times x plus y over xy equals t. Uh, quick solving for d. Uh, I'm going to multiply the xy and put it up there. I'm going to multiply the x plus y and put it down here. And the result is going to be txy divided by x plus y. Now, if I went through that algebra <coughs> kind of fast, I encourage you to pause the video and start back with this equation and solve for d. Okay. I actually also paused the video and I was going to erase everything but chose not to. But uh, now if you look at this answer right here, it's the same as that answer right there. And I am totally not a fan of this method of solving the problem, so let us never speak of it again. Now, the method that I am a fan of. The method that I just showed you, by the way, if you go to the official guide for the GMAT, it'll be the method that they show you how to do. My way of solving this problem, and literally, as a PhD mathematician, this is how I would solve the problem if I'm doing this on the test. I would say, what if Aaron was going on a 10-mile jog? So that's the distance. And what if he jogs at 10 miles per hour? And what if he walks at 5 miles per hour? I made those numbers up on purpose to be easy. And by that I mean jogging 10 miles at 10 miles per hour means that the jogging time is going to be one hour and the walking time is going to be two hours. In other words, he spends a total of three hours jogging. X is 10 miles per hour, Y is five miles per hour, time is three hours. The question is, which of A, B, C, D, or E gives us the answer 10 miles? Now, again, I encourage you to pause the video and actually plug them in. And so, why don't you do that now? Okay, so hopefully you did pause the video because I also paused the video and computed the answers. Uh, A will give you x times t, which is 30, divided by y, which is 5, 30 over 5 is 6. B gives you a fraction, 13 fiftieths. D gives you a fraction, 18 fiftieths. Uh, e gives you some fractions. I didn't even feel like working it out. The point is C gives you 10, which is the distance. <clears throat> now, wasn't this easier than the other method? Um, a lot of you may be unsettled when you see something like this and say, like, well, what if it doesn't work? Um, plugging in numbers isn't. A flawless method, but it lets you solve problems that are otherwise impossible. And on a timed test, quickly being able to eliminate some answers to at least profitably guess is such a valuable way to increase your score. And the GMAT and the GRE are all about increasing your score. It's not about learning complicated algebra. So if you're a master algebraist and you can do the first method, more power to you. I consider myself a master algebraist. I would never use the first method. I would use this method. So try it with different numbers. Try something like, you know, somebody who jogs six miles an hour and he jogs for... 
you know, four miles, and then he walks at four miles an hour, and see how it works out. Um, another way you can apply this is to just go through the entire book of exercises, whatever book that you have, and see how many problems you can do by plugging in numbers. I guarantee you it will open your mind to new ways to solve these problems. And it really will give you a sense of empowerment because you'll be able to solve some problems that you just had no idea how to do, I promise. Hope you learned something.